labeling industrial control panels. You see all these labels on these different components here as well, here as well. Well, in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you how and why I've labeled the components as I have and the importance of them, especially when you're building a panel for the first time, but also probably not more importantly, but equally as importantly, when you modify panels on site. So this video, I'm gonna go through all of that. Okay guys, so onto the labeling now. And as you can see here from this image, the two things that I use for my labeling is the Wago printer uh, and the software to go with it. And pretty standard, I think most people will have one of these brother printers. So those are the two things I use for labeling control panels. So yeah, as you can see here, this is the software for the Wago printer and it just makes labeling terminal blocks so much easier and you can use it for labeling all sorts of different things. I'm only using it at the moment for terminal block labeling because that's the only uh, media that I have you can, I would have probably done more labeling with it, but I don't have like the, the different types of media to print on at the moment. So yeah, this is what it looks like um, doing the designs for the terminal blocks. It's really, really good. You can see here, this is how the setup of it is. Um, you just got a reel of media here, it goes into the printer, um, and then you connect it to your computer and use the software to do the printing and whatnot. And there's another angle. Um, highly recommend getting some tweezers for this part. It's really, really fiddly and trying to, trying to stick labels. Um, this is more so for the actual labels and the brother printer. It's really hard to actually get them stuck down to the back plate or trunking um, when they're really small labels. So yeah, I highly recommend getting some tweezers as well. I typically use this 45 degree angled one. On the power terminals on the left hand side, I didn't actually use the Wago printer because as you can see, there's, there's lots of different levels here and I'd already put these standard idents or labels there, so I just left it. Also on the other side, the BMS side, you can see in the drawings that I have labeled them BMS, one, two, three, four, etc. So yeah, it made more sense here for me to actually label them BMS and then the number. There's not so many different levels here, so I didn't have to cut lots of different individual labels, so it made more sense doing it on this side. So yeah, BMS 1 through to 18, and also the KNX label as well, for our outgoing KNX cable. I've done a similar thing for the neutral bar, or neutral buzz bar, and then same thing for 24 volt AC, the 200 circuit, and the 10 volt DC as well. And I've also just added in the circuit number as as well. Also use the, the Wago printer for the relays. So all the relays from 1 to 33 is just one continuous label. Uh, that was really good. So that's going uh, running across all the relays. Now coming to use the brother printer. Um, this is how I'm labeling my MCBs and I'm doing it on the back plate because I have label labeled individual MCBs before and MCBs are usually the things that get replaced. So I just think it's, it's and then if they get replaced, then they don't always get replaced back with a label on them. So yeah, I'm just, I've just put the MCB label on the back plate here one through to 15. Also recommend putting a main incoming earth point and it's pointing to this terminal block here, just so it's absolutely 100% clear where, yeah, that incoming earth connection should go and not getting confused with putting it uh, on this bar here, just really for the commissioning or installation team. Also accepted circuits. Um, so these are orange cables are accepted circuits, which basically means that they are, even if the panel is switched off and isolated, these circuits are fed from another supply, and in our case is the overdoor heaters, and they could be providing a 230 volt supply or signal or whatever you wanna call it back into this panel, even if the panel is switched off. So this is where it's really important to let people know who are working on the panel that even if the panel's off, these are still 230 volt live potentially. So just being very clear with that label, warning potential live 230 volt AC circuits when system isolated, terminals nine to 12, so nine to 12. Um, I put this here because it's very, very clear, but it is on the trunking, which over 
time trunking does get lost or that it might not get put on in the right place. So I've also just added a smaller label here. But what you've got to bear in mind is this is probably going to be covered up with outgoing cables once it's commissioned. So people won't necessarily be able to see that as easy. So basically that's why I've put two labels there. And then this is kind of just a, an extra nice to have really just to point out to the commissioning installation guys that this top piece of trunking is for the electrical installation cables. So I've done that on both the power side and the BMS side. Also, um, I've got a load of these like pre-made up stickers from cable craft so whatever the voltage is of your panel in this case it's a 230 volt panel but it might be in your case uh, a 410 panel just make sure that you put this danger voltage label on the on the front of your panel uh, matching whatever voltage it is and also just marking the um the bonding points their earth points and yeah that's basically it for the labeling and this is the panel all labeled up and yeah pretty much finished. I didn't mention, well, we've already been through the labeling of all the components. Uh, just as a reminder, that was using the Brother printer. And I've also just got a label here for the laptop socket, 10 amp max laptop socket.